Hi, this is JP at Websites for Beginners, and we're looking at the post carousel from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg that works within the WordPress editor. And we give this element a one, two, three, four. Ferocious cats out of five. Let's see why it deserves this four cat rating. The post carousel allows you to bring your post to the front or on any page and display it in a carousel where you can cycle through them like this way. And then of course, if you want to go them, you simply click on the post and it will go into the post. Everything I'm showing you here has been done within WordPress and the WordPress editor with the add-on Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg by Brainstorm Force. While I'm on this page, let's use this page and say I want to bring in that post carousel over here. At the bottom, I have the previous and I have next post, where you, you can cycle through your different posts. But I think it would be very interesting to actually have that post carousel here. It will be far more visual and people will react better to that and interact with it, kind of enticing them to go to other posts. So let's go into edit our post. And we go down over here, click on add block, and we look for our ultimate add-ons blocks for Gutenberg. If you cannot find it easily, simply type up here post with a C, post carousel, and you will find it. Remember, you can install this for free from the WordPress repository. Click and it brings in the post carousel. By default, it's going to show you more or less what we had seen on the front end. The reason we give this four stars is because from the beginning, this post carousel just works. And then you can make a few changes here or there to make it look better but it is a very effective post carousel. And look at this, here I am displaying it on a single post and it acts almost like a next and before carousel slider. Click on the block to interact with it and then we go to the block settings here on the right. So you can see here for general, if I collapse it, we have post types and we have a few things here, but let's collapse that and we go to the carousel first. I will disable autoplay for now, Otherwise, this thing is going to keep going by and by and by as we work with it. And I think just having it a little bit more static is easier on the eyes and my, my brain as well. Let's go up, collapse carousel and go to general. Over here, we start here with the number of items that will be displayed from your post. So I've chosen six. You can go up much higher if you have more posts. And if you only want a few to be selected, you bring down that number to a reasonable number like I've got here over six. You can choose to display pages, not only posts, and then you have control over the categories as well as what type of categories. Here I have fitness and health. I'll leave it on all for this display. Arrange, you have from date or time or random, and then the order ascending or descending. Here is what I'm interested in. Columns, you can have it on three, more, and of course you can even go down to one. I'm going to leave it on three, but what I want to point out here is that you have control over tablet and you also have control over mobile. And you will see that the preset for tablet is set to two and then for mobile is one. Those are good settings in my opinion. Even this three for desktop display, I think is a good guess to go with. The one I like is this one over here, equal height. And I like equal height, especially if you're going to be working with a shaded background like this just to give it that equalization at the bottom. I really, really like that. So we've set that up. Let's go and then hop on over to Carousel. Here you have all the interactive controls for this element and you have the rotation speed. Let's look here. What is this? Arrows and dots display only arrows. So you have the navigation arrows on the left and the right. And then you can choose to only use the navigation dots at the bottom. I'll put it back on arrows and dots. Where are we now? I have to general carousel and we put it back on arrows and dots. The moment you bring in the arrows, you have control over the arrow size here, larger and the border size and border radius. So if you want to have a nice rounded border for that arrow, just drag it all the way to the right and it will give you that rounded border for the arrows. Let's collapse the carousel and look at what you can do with the image. A few things here, very nice. Of course, you can disable it if you just want to have the post text there, but then you have also the option here to actually use the image as a background. You'll have to apply some overlays here just to make it a little bit more visible for your text. 
And that is a very nice effect that you can apply and then add some padding inside this with the spacing element. I'm going to add it back to top. Let's leave it there and collapse our image. The content is next up in here. You have all the selections that you can choose from, your title, show author. I think I will remove that. Show date, I will leave that. Show comments, no comments, so take that out and show excerpt. The excerpt, you can increase the length for that. Decrease it, let's put it back to something like 20 characters. Collapse content, read more link, and that is our button down here. Show read more link. If you disable it, people will still be able to click on the image and the title to activate that post. Let's leave the button on and see what we've got here. Read more, that's good. And then for your call to action tag, you have control over your font over here. Width is one and rounded corners. Let's drag that up to also around 50. And then for the padding, I'll add some padding at the top. Let's take that to, where are we? 10, and this I'm gonna take up to 40. 30, let's make the button not too big. And we can make some color changes here. Let me draw, click on this, and I'll just go and grab that color code. Control copy to select it. And then we go back here. And we were at our call to action. Read more link. They change the name every time. And we find the colors down here. So for the background color, I'm going to put it on this one that I've just copied and I will leave the rest. Now here I did find a problem with the hover effect. I tried to activate the hover, so if I go for background color, let's say I wanted to have it on white, and then for the text, let's see, this time it seems like it's going to work. It didn't work earlier, ah, there it works for me. Let's bring in a border as well, because maybe that's where I ran into problem. And it works, no problem, it all works pretty pretty nicely. It didn't work for me, for me previously, a little bit inconsistent there. So I guess if you run into that problem, maybe remove the whole thing, come back, and then it will work. Click on it again to activate it. And we are at our read more link. I think we've done everything here that we are happy with. We are. Make some changes to topography. So the topography will style and choose the sizes here for our Titles, we start here at the top. Currently it's set to H3. Now you can leave it on any H you want to leave it. And then you can play around over here with the topography and set the size. What I'll do is I'm going to put it on H4 because I think the sizing for the H4 is just better looking and I like it better that way. Then for the meta, the excerpt, I think that is good. You can make changes there. And then you have also control if you want to change the colors. So for the background, what I'll do here is I'm going to bring in this pink, but just lighter. So let's take custom color. I paste that color in again, and then I'll grab the selector, drag it up there and drag it to the left. Something like this. Right. And now we've added a little bit of background separation to that. That's your choice, what you want to do with that background. Colors, so the rest of the colors, we have color control for the title and the meta, the excerpt, as well as the arrows and dots. Color, let's do that same pink, make it all more a little bit uniform. I don't see the arrows really changing. Maybe there was a little change there. I didn't really see that. Collapse the colors, and I like to collapse these bars. I just think if all of them were extended, it's very difficult to work, and I wish that WordPress at some way to collapse all and expand all just to make it a little bit easier to work with. The last one that you have to look at is spacing and spacing will be important, especially if you have this kind of box border here and your text is just too close to it. You need to bring in a little bit more padding on the left and the right. Let's see what we can do. Row gap, where is this row gap coming in? The row gap is the space between our posts. So I think you can bring that down all the way if you want like so. Let's give it about 15 pixels. 15 is good. Gap between posts and dots. And this one seems not to work for me. As much as I drag it, nothing seems to happen. So I think good idea at this point is let's save it, update, and we go view it on the front end. I've put the gap currently at zero. And I think this one doesn't work, but let's see. 
something we can let the guys at Brainstorm Force know. Hey, the gap between the dots. You guys need to look at that. There we go. So this is zero pixels. Hey, and you have to agree. It looks good, right? Immediately, if you had a visitor come to your blog and they scroll down, scroll down, like, oh, what is this? I, I want to read more about this. It just looks really, really good. This is very effective post carousel. Let's go back to our dots. So we were here, gap between posts and dots. And I'm going to increase it now to 50. Update that. And then let's see if we can visually see any difference on the front end. Nope, uh, nope, I don't see any changes there. So just remember, the gap between posts and dots are set there at this moment. Don't worry too much about this slider. Not everything in the world is perfect. Content padding, this is here where I will bring in some more padding. Currently set to 20 pixels. So you see if I drag it a little bit, I add more space here on left, right, top and bottom. And then you see content padding for mobile. So for the mobile, you will be able to set this separately, but we'll have a look whether we need that or not. And then some spacing that you can apply. I do think the spacing here is good, but just to show you, you have title bottom spacing, so you can add more spacing. Well, let's give it a little bit more. For the metadata bottom spacing, or I can bring it closer, and then just between the excerpt and the read more call to action. There we go. I like that a little bit better. And that's it. Look at all those changes that you have made. It looks really good. Something that I sometimes miss out are the settings up here just to have a look. Change alignment. So we have left alignment. Oh, right in the center. Okay. I know I keep missing these settings and that's why it drew my eye as we were working with it. And I thought, wait a minute, let me go back up there to see what's this all about. So here is your left alignment for all the content, center alignment, and then align right. Let's put it back on the left, update. We go preview it and then we test it to see whether it's okay on tablet and how it will look on a cell phone display. To the front end, we go with our Armada, scroll down. It looks good. Let's activate here in our Blisk browser, developer mode, so we can play around with these displays. Let's go for the iPad first. Before I scroll down, how many posts do you expect to see? Remember, that setting is by default on two. So as we scroll down, we should see only two. And I see the arrows are here. I don't think that is bad. It overlaps, it's not perfect. It's not the way I would like it, maybe to bring it in a little bit more, but I think for all intents and purposes, this looks really good on a tablet. And of course, you'll probably use your finger to swipe with it as you go from one post to the next. The dots here at the bottom, as I click on them, yeah, they also work very well. And let's go over here to Samsung Galaxy to see how the Galaxy is. And for the Galaxy, remember, we put it on one column, or by default, it is at one. Galaxy, down here, we have our arrows, so... I think we will need to add a little bit margin here so that it's not that close. And let's add that padding. You remember that one setting that we have just for our cell phones. Let's see if that can do the job. Go back to the back end and then spacing. Gap between where were we? Content padding on mobile. Now, if you start dragging here, you see your already at 224, that's almost the entire screen. So that doesn't make any sense. Drag it to the left and let's put it around, let's see. I'm going to just type in there 50. See how that looks, 50, 50. And this is only for mobile, not for tablet. Update that and let's jump back to the front. Wait for the page to refresh. And then let's see if we have more space here on the left and the right. There, there, there we go, Bobby. Do you see that? Now it doesn't go underneath the navigation arrows. A little bit more space, a little bit more squashed, but still for a mobile display, I think it does a very nice job. This is not necessary. It's not part of the element, but I do would want to add some more space there. So the way you would do that is you would either put this element within a column or you would bring in a spacer down here. Let's bring in a spacer. There's our good friend Spacer. We call him Mr. Space and update. 
what is that? 46 pixels. And then we see if we've had added, yep, that looks much better. So when Felicity comes to your site, she's very interested in what you are doing. She can easily cycle through here by clicking on the dots, clicking on the arrows, or she can just use her finger, like I'm showing you here, and swipe from left to right. And if she's in a wild, crazy mode, she can swipe from right to left on that day. And this is the post carousel add-on for WordPress Gutenberg with the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. And this is totally free. So go check it out in the WordPress repository. It's a great element, maybe a few tweaks for improvement here and there. Remember the spacing between the dots and the post, that doesn't work. If they can fix that, it will get a five ferocious cats rating. At this moment, it stands at an excellent four cats ferocious rating. This is JP here at Websites for Beginners. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel, check out the other videos and tutorials, and see you in the next video.